many waters cannot quench love, neither can floods drown it. If a man offered for love all the wealth of his house, he will be utterly despised. So today we want to start on a journey, the journey of love. So we are going to start with what I've titled this thing called love. Can we pray? Father, we thank you. Because the entrance of the word gives light and understanding unto the simple. As simple folks, we have come to learn at your feet. I make my tongue the pen of a ready writer and I write the word of life upon the spirit of man. After now, oh God, make us all better people. Let us walk according to your counsel. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, before you have your seat, um, I want us to serenade ourselves with love a little. Listen, do you know this song? It's, uh, uh, it's for those spiritual people, those guys who get drunk on the spirit. Uh, those who get drunk on the spirit. Say, kiss me with the kisses of your li- Your love is better than life. Your love is better than wine. <laughs> your love is... Is better than what? Karo Shakataya. Praise God. All right, you can have your seat in God's presence. Listen, that song was sung by God's, God's Will Hoyo. All right, so it's not me. We are not just canal people. We are singing songs people sing. And if you are wondering whether that's scriptural, Song of Solomon chapter 1 and verse 2, you will find it there. Songs of Solomon chapter 1 verse 2. So you see, love is a beautiful thing. A very spiritual thing. God created and ordained many things. I've started preaching, by the way. God created and ordained many things. One of the most beautiful things God created was love. And he's still love. Love is a mystery. Yes, it is very real. Let me say this to you. A man has never lived who has never been touched by a trace of true love. A man has never lived who has never been touched by a trace of true love. So love makes a whole life, a whole new experience. One of the greatest blessings you can find in life is finding someone you can lovingly do life together. One of the greatest blessings is finding someone you can lovingly do life together. Why? Because life is difficult. Life is hard. Life is pressure. But if you can find someone who will always be on your team, no matter what, then you are a good person. I tell you this, when a person finds love, they find spark. And all about them just sparkles. If you find a lady you think I've given up about on life, maybe she's 31, 32, 33, and she looks very morose and all of that, she's not happy anytime, just let her fall in love. Praise God. That lady you greet and never answer, she will just be blushing everywhere. She goes everywhere smiling. The world becomes very soft. Because life loses hardness when a man finds love. Listen, that it is good to be in love. It's also terrible to fall out of love. To be disappointed by love uh, is a killing feeling. I pray for you, you will never be disappointed in love. Someone does not get that prayer. Is that the kind of prayer you pray in tongues with? Uh, you will never be disappointed by love. A quick story here. I know a man, a woman, growing up, to, while growing up, she was like a big sister to us. And then she was in this relationship with this fantastic engineer. For her, they were the amazing couple because we were very young. We were still in primary, secondary school. And it was cool to find people who are fresh and fresh in love. Uh, and we found that very exciting. And suddenly, the man left her and went to another person. This woman was in UCH Ibadan for six months. True life story. And she was a medical doctor. So she had to flunk her grade and do some of those things. What happened? Because love eats her in a terrible way. Now, sometimes in life, when you think about the word of God, I'm not sure you think about the word of God and romantic love together. You, you don't think, they don't work together. So for you, when you want to talk about the Bible, it's because you want to make a decision about life. The Bible for you is when you need deep things and you really want to gain wisdom and gain knowledge. When someone needs decisions and when make, deci- make decisions and is in value of decisions, then he lean towards his Bible. 
You don't find people go towards the Bible when they need love. Especially when we're not talking about agape. You know, God's kind of love, you can really just go look for the Bible. But I want to show you some scriptures today very quickly. I want it to be the foundation of the things I'll be saying to you. And you find out that the scripture is about people who amazingly died because of love, gave their life because of love. John 3, 16, for God so loved the Lord that he gave his only begotten son. John 15 and verse 13, Jesus said there's no greater love than this, that a man should die for his friend. I'm not talking about Romeo and Juliet. I'm talking about a real person dying because of someone. Praise God. You want to be overwhelmingly romantically, you want to just feel overwhelmingly loved. You want to have this ridiculous feeling of love. You know, some of us are ridiculously romantic. Why some of us are ridiculously stoning? Where do you go when you want to step up or you want to spice up your relationship? I'm sure you don't go to the Bible. Because you feel the Bible is just about thou shalt not, thou shalt, thou shalt not, if not, where do you go, and all of that. Have you read Genesis 20 and verse 20? 29 and verse 20. Genesis 29 and verse 20. If you can have it on the screen very quickly. The Bible says, And Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed only a few days to him, because of the love he had for her. Seven years. That's a medical student. Seven years. And they said it looked like days to him. Why? Love. Proverbs chapter 7 verse 18. I'm giving you scriptures that you can quote for people. Because love is amazing. You know when you sing number one fan to a girl. <laughs> oh God, can't enjoy. God bless him for those relics. Look at that. Say, come let us take our fill of love until morning. Let us delight ourselves with love. You've not found that in the Bible before. It's there. I'll give you another one. Proverbs 30, 18 to 19. Proverbs 30, 18 to 19. Proverbs 30, 18 to 19. <laughs> there are three things which are too wonderful for me. Yes, for which I do not understand. The way of an eagle in the hair, the way of a serpent, serpent on a rock, the way of the sheep in the midst of the sea, and the way of a man with a virgin. When a man finds is with somebody she, he loves, you can see that guy does not smile. When the guy finds somebody he loves, you won't understand his ways anymore. Say there's no money, the guy will find money. That's what love does. You can't understand the way. Let's go to Songs of Solomon chapter 2 and verse 2. More katan in Songs of Solomon. When you find love, you don't go on Google and be searching for romantic poems. Just read Songs of Solomon. Like a lily among thorns, so is my love among the daughters. You see, there's a way you read certain scriptures. You don't read them normally. You say, eh, like a lily among thorns, so is my love among the daughters. You don't do that. Say, so like a lily among thorns, so is my love among the daughters. Praise God. You can see that my voice has changed. Normally when I preach to you, I don't preach this way. I say you receive fire when the anointing of the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Soft. Songs of Solomon chapter 3 and verse 4. It's all in the Bible. Songs of Solomon 3 and verse 4. It was... Uh -uh. Okay, that's my hero. Songs of Solomon chapter 4 verse 7. You are all fair, my love. And there is no spot in you. In the Bible, in the thou shall not. <laughs> you know, Songs of Solomon chapter 3 verse 4. Another translation says, it was but a little that I passed from them. But I found him whom my soul loved. I held him and I will not let him go. Now, let's, let's, before I go to what I want to teach you, let me give you one more. Permission to give you one more. Some of you have turned me to your concordance. <laughs> you are writing it down. Songs of Solomon chapter 8, 6 to 7. You know, when you are a student of the world, you use it for everything. Everything. Why should I go to Google? When, when Solomon was this blessed? 
Follow me very quickly. Set me as a seal upon your heart. As a seal upon your heart. Another translation says, put me as a tattoo. For love is as strong as death. Jealousy as cruel as the grave. Its flames are flames of fire. A most vehement flame. Verse 7. Many waters cannot quench love. Neither can floods drown it. If a man offered for love all the wealth of his house, he will be totally despised. So brethren, what is love? Don't put scriptures I did not call out. <laughs> Songs of Solomon is a very, very amusing book of the scriptures. Let's just put it that way. Praise God. Now, I want to give you a little background for the book of, for Songs of Solomon. That book, Songs of Solomon, you are not allowed as an Hebrew to read that book, the book of, the book of Songs of Solomon, until you have read, finished reading the Pentateuch. You cannot read that book. So it tells that there, you must get to a level of spiritual maturity before you read the books of the songs of Solomon. It also tells you what is expected before a man gets into a relationship. That the man must have a level of maturity before he starts talking about love. So some of us here under the sound of my voice, you are taking this down as a note, not to practice, but as a note for your life. So that when the years come, you can enter fully into it. But for now, sweetheart, it's not for you yet because you have not entered into that level of maturity. But I also know seated before me are people who are ready, praise God. People who are ready to mingle. People who are ready to dance. People who are ready to read this book of the songs of Solomon. Not by reason of age, but by reason of discernment and maturity. So what is love? Listen, true romantic love does not look like whatever people call it. It's easy to say I found love. But for us to be able to define what love is, we want to first of all look at what love is not. Because when you understand what love is not, you will be able to fully grasp what love is. So that you'll be able to tell yourself whether you are mocking each other, you are not really in love. Because you see, the Bible told us in the book of Second Chronicles uh, verse, uh, chapter 16, there were certain folks who were mocking each other. Solomon and Del um, Samson and Delilah, they were mocking each other. He said, how can you say you love me and your heart is not with me? Uh, he said, you have been mocking me all these days. That's another book you need to read. Very interesting something. Praise God. All right, so number one, romantic love is not lost. Write that down. Romantic love is not lost. I don't want people here who are not writing. I want you to write them down because I want you to remember them. That's why you have forums. You can take notes. So romantic love is not lost. It is possible to confuse love and lust, but the two are not the same. One is of the art, the other is of the body. Or you can say one is of the art, the other is of the head. So, the major difference between love and lust is that one is of the art, the other is of the head. So, your head will keep running things with you. And I want you to get home today, I want you to read Second Samuel chapter 13. Can I have very quickly Second Samuel chapter 13 and verse 1 on the screen? Second Samuel chapter 13 and verse 1. Uh, uh, the story of Ammon can be found in 2 Samuel chapter 13, 1 to 15. After this, Absalom, look at that, the son of David, had a lovely sister, whose name, you see when they say lovely sister in scriptures, it is still being spiritual. They said as a beautiful, smashing girl. That's what that verse is saying. Praise God. Because you, some of us, you want to still go and run the ranks of KJV with a girl of a New Testament age. So you can't say you look lovely. The girl does not understand that. She you are very beautiful. Praise God. We still make the same heaven. After this, Absalom, Absalom, the son of David, had a lovely sister whose name was Tamar. And Amnon, the son of David, loved her. That's what the Bible says, but it was not true love. In fact, that thing should not be translated as love. What you should find there is the word lost. Why? Go to verse 15. You know the story, he eventually raped her, slept with her. Verse 15. Then, after she had raped her, you know some things should not be read in church, that XX, so praise God. Let's just go to verse 15. <laughs> then Amnon hated her exceedingly. 
so that the hatred which he hated her was greater than the love with which he had loved her. See contradiction. And Amnon said to her, Arise, be gone. Listen, when a man lost after you, after he has taken you to bed, what he will say is what they have been saying for generations. Arise and be gone. Arise and be gone may mean not speaking your calls anymore. It may mean not talking to you anymore. Arise and be gone may mean I am not at home. Arise and be gone may mean I'm busy at work. Arise and be gone may mean my project is difficult. But all he's saying is I have gotten what I want and I'm done with you. And today many people claim they are in love. But the moment they sleep with the other party, love ends. So how can you tell the difference? That's why you came to church. Listen, if you are more interested or, he's more, or she's more interested in the bedroom than having conversation. Or you are focused on the person's look. If your conversations are always about sex, shapes and figures, you are probably feeling lost than love. Love is not about physical gratification. Love is about doing life together. So when I see him, I mean, ah, the, the guy just talks, it's about your lips, it's about your shapes, it's about the clothes, it's about how his head has scattered. Nothing about your future together, nothing about your plans, nothing about your schooling, nothing about your academics, then you are in trouble. Number two, romantic love is not friendship. Help me tell your neighbor, romantic love is not friendship. <laughs> friendship and love often seem similar, which can be confusing. This is because we feel love for a friend, like we feel for a romantic partner. It's easy to mistake friendship for love, because we often spend so much time with our friends, that we imagine that we can do life together. But that's not true. Because someone flows with you, someone understands you, someone gets you, does not mean that person can be your lover. It's okay. I know people say, I will marry my friend. You must build friendship with the person you eventually end up with. But you will never find, you, you should not think that anybody who is a close friend with you is going to ask you out. And that's the problem many brothers have in church. No sooner have we begin to talk about, ah, you look good, thank you, ah, you, you are smashing today, praise God, you like God, ah, and then I call you, check on you, have you gotten home, and then you think I'm interested. I'm just trying to build relationship. If you want to cough, you can cough very well. <laughs> but at this point, I must also rule that we have so many brothers who are rascals in church. Brothers... Amen. Shout the amen well. Yeah. Brothers who do not understand the difference between running riots with a woman's emotion and being friends with a woman. When a woman starts getting emotionally attached to you and you have prayed according to you and you know you are never going that direction, then it's time to begin to break that relationship because you care for that girl. Simple wisdom is not simple for the fools. And that's why many people ruin emotions, wreck ladies. And you will hear people say assistant girlfriend. In fact, they say about our church that many of our men, they are in the ego's ministry. They just sniff around girls. No intention being known. And then after they have soiled and raised the ladies' emotion, they come with the bananas, I prayed about it, and God said no. What happened to praying before you made that emotion go up? You know, friends, keep friends in friend zones. Because when you start asking a lady house and she's meant to be your friend or he is your friend, if she says no, that is the end of that friendship. So ask yourself, do I value this friendship not to ruin it? If I'm not sure she's going to say yes or God is not leading me in that direction. I tell you a personal story. I remember PJ, the only girl you people know who have been in this church for a while, who gave me a no with six inches I could not move. No, he entered, hit me down from the seat. I could not stand. When she stood up, I told myself, I think he meant to stand. So I stood up. She was a very good friend. We speak, we talk. I encourage her, console her. But I now, because of pressure, peer pressure, many people, my friends were in relationship. 
So I felt I was alone. So somebody said, ah, but you and this girl flows. You get each other. So I gave the message of life. And then the message was Dakwada. He returned it to me. Why? Because I did not understand these things. There are some people who will be friends with you. After that time, I tried being friends again. It didn't work. Listen to this. Many people have lost friendship because they were trying to convert friendship to relationship. Some people in your life are destiny connections. They are just friends that God has put in your life so that you can walk together to the place called life. It, to do life together. Not because he will love you or take you down the altar or high. Just remain as friends and you will be fine. You know, I, I jokingly tell people this. In our days, if David and Jonathan had met each other, you know, friends called apart, they would have married as gays. Gay couples. Yeah, so that you will not lose the throne. I'll cuckoo marry you. And then you'll be, I'll become the princess. And then they call the princess. And the man united person comes out. So, number two, romantic love is not friendship. Number three, romantic love is not irrationally being jealous. That's not love or passion. It's distrust. Love is not explosive anger. Love is not ownership. Love is not force. It is open, honest, transparent, and communicative. Love does not restrain or constrict. You can't go there. Why have you been talking to him? Who are you chatting with? Let me see your phone. What was he saying to you at this hour of the day? Where have you been? I called your school. They said you are not there. Monitoring spirit. In a romantic relationship, irrational jealousy is a sign of distrust. Fundamentally, what he's saying is that I don't trust you. My father used to tell us that there cannot be love without trust. If you don't trust someone, don't be in a relationship with them. That's how to be sane. That's how to be safe. I don't trust you. I will never say yes to you. It's simple. Oh, he's an amazing guy. It's cool. 6.2 feet tall. And the girl, take home to mama. See the way she talks. When she smiles, it's like everyone smiles on you. Praise God. When you stay with a jealous man or a jealous woman, all those smiles will fade away in weeks. Number four, romantic love is not needing to be with each other every single moment. It's not needing to be with each other every single moment to the detriment of other interests or life experiences. It's not. I said it to you. Number one, romantic relationship is not lost. It's not sex. That's not what it is about. Number two, I told you that it is not friendship. Number three, it is not irrationally being jealous. And then number four, it's not needing to be with each other every single moment to the detriment of other friendships, interests, or life experiences. Some people, in the name of love, sticks with the other person like gum. It's like snail and a shell. When they move this way, the shell moves after them. He said, they say that's how to show we love each other. So the person paralyzes his life because he's following you as a protocol officer. You know, even as somebody who is not in love, the way some people follow me around, I'm irritated. I want a life. Let me stand and move. Mm, 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 crabby people. Tell somebody, don't be a bug. Be a lover. Don't be a bug. How many of you know about bed bug? Praise God. You know, some of you guys are very touche. In your houses, never heard of you, never seen it before. Praise the Lord. Amen. The kind of mattresses you guys sleep on. It was in the days of when we were growing. Iron. And then you put that thing on it. And then when it comes on you, you say, ah, who did you meet at school? Because those boys can follow you from school to your house. And they invest your house. They gum around. They stick. Try not to stick with somebody. Try to let that person find their individuality. Each person should be valued equally. Understand they have desires, they have dreams, they have hope. 
allow them to spread and fly. Love does not center on one person. It's not about one person. You know, you know um, there's an advert, it's about you, it's all about you. That's not love. You, you look at the man and say, I will live for you, it's all about you. Babe, you are in error. You have a dream, you have a vision. God sent you to this world to fulfill a purpose and you must be sure to do that. Number five, romantic love is not a scorecard. It's not a scorecard. <laughs> that is what he did yesterday. That's how he used to do. Do you remember when you did this seven months ago? You were wearing a white shirt and a blue and red tie and you told me this. This way you spoke to me. Love does not see favors or keep scores about who did what or, or, or when. That's how you used to sleep. I'm, 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 I'm the only one always waking us up. You will not wash plates. I'm the only one washing plates. Why must I be the only one saying sorry? This is what he did the last time. In disagreement, you may want to write this down. In disagreement, love doesn't bring up the records of wrong. Love doesn't bring up the records of wrong. I said in disagreement. Or you can call it a misunderstanding. That means you will misunderstand each other. The intention is always right. But it may be misconstrued. You may, de you may denote it in another way. Decode it in another way. And that's what comes about. That's what people call about misunderstanding. It's time to talk about it. Not now say, oh. Anytime he sees a lady like this, his, his face just brights up. Why don't you make his face bright up at all times? Number six, romantic love is not concerned only with physical gratification. How can you be in a relationship as a Christian? And you have never slept with the girl. How are you sure she is? He, he, ah, some words are very. How are you sure he's not impotent? Mm -hmm. I'm trying not to say some words in church. How can you? I, I served in a place where their culture does not say you love a lady. And you do not sleep with the lady. How can you talk about love? But you know, our culture is heaven. Our culture is not from here. This is not loss. This is not physical gratification. This is not about my body. This is about doing life together. That's what life, love is about. You know, I don't want you to turn out like Tama. I don't want you to be another Hamnon. You need to understand that what you love about a lady, when you tell a lady or a guy you love her, ask yourself, what exactly do I love? If she get pregnant, all this V-shape, U-shape, X-shape, B-shape, R-shape you talk about. When she get pregnant, your slim girl can become a rotunda. Your rotunda can become an obese. So if what you love is a physical body, sweetheart, you are going out to go and look for other guys. And that's why I tell people, you need to understand who you are dating. If it's not a born again believer, you are wasting your time. Why? Because it is the seed of love according to Romans chapter 5 verse 5. That has been shed abroad in our heart that makes us live and continue to live. Even when the physical does not look enticing anymore. Don't let the Kardashians fool you. No lady is that clean, including them. That's why I tell people, don't watch Mexican film and all those Z-word nonsense. They look without sport. Digital editing. Crazy editing. No sport. Solomon said no sport. He's lying. It was because Solomon was pure with the girl. You will soon discover sports. Listen. If every time you see each other, you cannot keep your hands off the person, you are in lust, not love. 
about when it was Tamar's story, it was all about Tamar's body. I hope you understand that. So when a guy is telling you, you see, when a guy asks you, see, you are energized church people. Wisdom should be there. Guy says, I love you. Don't, don't, don't blush. You are beautiful. Don't blush. Stop blushing. That nonsense thing you do. You are beautiful. Don't blush. If you look at your mirror and you cannot tell yourself you are beautiful, something is wrong with you. You are created in the image of God, the very likeness of the Father. Beauty is not something a man should make you discover like it's a purpose. Listen, when a man tells you, I love you, you say, wait, do you know me? See, there are questions you ask guys, they will stop talking to you. They will go. You see, they will go. They go and research and come back. Say, do you love me? Say, do you know me? All you know is this. Do you know me? Moki Fuenri. Have I ever changed it for you before? Some of you love me, but you don't know me. Those who know me, hey, they cannot talk about love. When I give you voice, in one day, you might not talk to me in one month, but as you are sleeping, God is telling you, go back there. Because me and God, we are in the same club. When a guy tells you you are beautiful, tell him thank you. But what do you mean by beautiful? Because beauty is in the face of the beholder. So what are you building that you are talking about? Stop this nonsense. What are you? Don't blush. What's wrong with you? Say you are pretty. Number seven. Romantic love is not dishonest or resentful. Love is vulnerable. It's built on the love is vulnerable when it is built on the foundation of deceit. Love is not dishonest, it's not resentful. Love creates an environment to express or hear or utter your feelings or grievances. When you're in a relationship and you're afraid to tell this guy your anger issue is making me afraid, then you are dating a monster. If he's always right, he's a monster. You should look him in the face and tell him, See, this is what I think. You can do what you want, but this is what I think. Many men are egoistic, including me. I'm one of the most truthful preachers you'll ever find. But when my wife tells me something, I say, Mo, I have heard. Even God knows I didn't hear anything. <laughs> and then I walk away. But sometimes as I lie down on my bed, the Holy Spirit say, listen to what she has said. I don't know you you will fail you. And then, I know what to do. But she won't say it again. For some of you. I have set my hope. I have set. Keep quiet. If he's born again, then God will undo him. True love reveals. He doesn't lie. When the foundation of your relationship is deception, be sure the building will soon collapse. Love excels in truth. Listen to this. When you are afraid to say the truth, you are no longer in a loving relationship because love enthrones truth. Some of us have relationships that are built on falsehood. You know this is not your shape. Everything is fake. Everything. The clothes you wear, the ones under, everything is fake. Your hair, some of you are almost bad. I will talk about that. Just to chillax, chillax. Love is not guaranteed. That's another thing. Love is not guaranteed. And I think I'll end what love is not there. Love is not guaranteed. Somebody said, <laughs> love is not guaranteed. Yes, it's not. It requires nurturing and care and attendance and the daily practice of gratitude. Thank you. Thank you. Someone says, you look beautiful. I know. And you are walking like a peacock. Next time, he's not going to say anything again. Or some people will say, you look good. <laughs> what is that? Love, therefore, must be an everyday choice. 
That you are in love today does not guarantee you will be in love tomorrow. Is someone listening to me? Love needs maintenance. It requires daily nurturing and care. So again, I ask the question, what is love? Love is intangible, is independent, is caring, is natural, and is unpredictable. So when you will find love, you will find it in the strangest of places. And that's why I, I smile when people say, I, I don't like church boys. I don't like church girls. <laughs> they are boring. I tell them, I am not boring. I am not, those who know me know, I am not boring. And there are no, there are no one of me. There are plenty of me. But our guys also need to step up. Some of them cannot even wear clothes very well. Uh, orange or blue tie. What's wrong with you? There are some colors. I don't understand why a guy is wearing it. But I've, I will get there. I will get there. I will get there. We we'll still talk about finding boas and finding roots. How you can find your own boas. How you can find your own roots. And we'll talk about the characteristics of the eri, eri boas and eri roots. They are not fake people. Real roots. And real boas. Let's, let's get there first. Love isn't something we go to the market and buy. Something we hand out as a reward or something. Love is not twinkle, twinkle, little star. You know, many of us, we read books. As secondary school students, you read books. No, I read them and B, H and B, Hill and Booms. And they say when James talked to Jane. And then Jane and I, sparkle, sparkle, sparkle. In real life, there are no sparkling anywhere. So that guy may be God's will for your life. Because you don't feel any sparkle does not mean it's not God's will. God does not deal with your body. He deals with your spirit. Ojumye, in my eyes, the way I know love is that he's starry, starry eyes, starry eyes. Sweetheart, you may have taken codeine if you are feeling starry. Which is something you should not take. Which is something you should not take. So what is love? Love is making a daily commitment to love, to nurture, understand, and care. You see, when we talk about love, it's not only about even friends, even to our parents. We must daily commit to them. We must daily love them, understand and care for their needs. Very important. That's what love is about. Because if you are not a love being, if you are not working in these things, you don't begin to practice it when you want to get married. You must make a commitment to nurture, to understand, to care for people. Like I said, some people are not matured. This thing is not for them. I'm just telling you to write it down so that 10 years from now you can pick it up and say, okay, this is what they are talking about. Okay, okay. This is how I am. Am I in love? You will check it. We still listen to Reverend George's message 30 years ago because we want instruction today. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Number two, love is being lovingly honest and approachable in times of misunderstanding. When some people get into misunderstanding with the opposite sex or with even their friends, fire and hell. They cut off contact, they delete WhatsApp number, they delete Facebook number, delete social media, they delete everything. A church lady many years ago, I was just trying to tell her, no, you don't dress like this. Why is your ear this scruffy? Try and do something about it. If you are doing human hair, do human hair. If you want to gel the thing, gel the thing. This one is confusing. I don't wear this pink skirt. And wear a green top. You look more like a rainbow than a human being. I was just trying to advise. And she thought I was molding her to be my wife. So she gets home. True life story. My wife knows. She gets home and then she tells to some people. Say, ah, say, oh, ah, that guy, he's so awesome, that guy, la, 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 la. I didn't know anything. She graduated. I said, how oh, are we going to celebrate your graduation? She said, I'm thinking we should just go out. I said, no problem. Chicken Republic, me, if say, oh, no care. No, me, they spend money. I just sit down and chop food. They go, they go. I was just talking to somebody who is spiritually blessing nothing. I said she was sincerely in serious lust. My God. You know what she did eventually? Deleted my number. Deleted my social media contact. 
blocked me everywhere. That time there was no WhatsApp. Blocked me everywhere. Praise the Lord. It didn't even affect me one bit. You know, because see motion. When you have a misunderstanding with somebody, you must be able to call the person. What you said, I don't like it. Number three, love is totally committing to a life of truth. Some of us, you see, we grew up as liars. I'm sorry. Some people, it's easier and faster for them to say lies than truth. They will say, ah, I've lied those. But they can't say anything like that. Was it raining yesterday? Some people say no. No. Because their first contact is, and everybody knew it rained. You know, some people, when, you talk to, when I talk to them, I expect, them, I expect them to lie. So when they say something, I know it's the opposite that is the truth. <laughs> Some people lie, but that's, that's even good. Some people are lies themselves, lies. Lies. They can't, they can't, they can't do otherwise. The hair is a lie. The dressing is a lie. The clothes is a lie. The forming of the accent is a lie. He has never been to an airport. No talk of traveling out. It's a lie. The fake accent is a lie. Everything is a lie. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? When you follow some people to their father's house, you will stop greeting them. They take pictures on other people's car, take picture in the flower in church, go to directions and take picture, go to Lekki, go and visit a friend looking for a job, they snap and they walk away saying their fathers are rich. Fake people. Have you heard about the Shulamite woman? The Shulamite woman that the Songs of Solomon was written about. Songs of Solomon chapter 1 and you read verse 5 to 6. He said, I am black. He said, the sun makes me black. She said it herself. At that time, many people were not black. So it was something that was not good. It was not something that somebody would want to have. But let me say this to the Shulamite amongst us. That love found that woman. What someone calls your defect is exactly what someone else is looking for. So I speak to every Shulamite in this hall. Thou Shulamites, there is a Solomon in God's plan for you. You think you are short? Forget the high use. The Solomon is coming. You think you don't have air? Somebody likes you that way. I saw a man dating a woman. I felt. You will to kill yourself? Say, I love them like this. So all this trying not to hit. A guy told me once. He said, I said, short people, shy. He said, hey, petty people, very awesome. You carry them like this. <laughs> the way you carry sister over, you can't carry Mandisa like that. You're in trouble. <laughs> what are we talking about? Or you carry Shewa like that, you are done with. <laughs> but you know what? Some people are looking for the Shewas of this world. They say, when she sees there, we know that my mama has come. Yeah. Ah! Listen. Listen very carefully. Say someone is looking for me. I am the exact fit of somebody. I know somebody who said, I'm not eating again. I want to be lean. The girl was on hunger strike because she wants to be lean. When somebody in God's plan, God knows the kind of shape that she has to be. So when the girl comes, ah, no, this God is not the vision. No. I love me the way I am. Number four, I'll just run through this. Love is undying forgiveness. To love someone means to commit to a life of forgiveness. You forgive the person before offense comes. Some of you are still angry with your parents. Angry with your uncles. Number five, love is a choice. Number six, love is being a good companion of another. So you see, you can have friends who can fit these bills. You can have friends who can fit this. So next week, we want to take it to another dimension. 
want to talk about the nature, the qualities that you will find in a person who really loves you. Because I want to take you through this journey so that after now, I am tired of people, they say they love you and because of that they are sleeping with you. Something's wrong with you. What is that? If, you, if nobody, directors know this, I, all, I practically tell them every day I love you. <laughs> I mean, if you're in a par- you have parents and homes where you're raised in places where people really love people, I love you is not something new. But some of you have never had it before. So I give you permission from today. Look at your girlfriends if you're a girl. Look at your boyfriend if you're a boy. Not because you are doing boy, man united, man united, or woman united. But look at them and learn to begin to say I love you. So that when you hear it practically so well, it won't be strange when somebody says it to you. The magic. And you know, who the man can look at? The minister there can say, I love you, brother. You, do, you look good. Come hug me. Come, come hug me. Come hug me. I love you, bro. <laughs> That's it. It doesn't does have to be, come, 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 come. Let, let's do one so that we go. Where you say? What's the meaning of that nonsense? Paul said, kiss each other with, greet each other with holy kiss. Means the hug, affection. That's why we say let the love go around. This is energized church. You've never been loved. Welcome home. Hug somebody. Say I love you. And walk away. Ah, ah. So that when that guy now can say I love you. Are you talking about being that kind of love? So what is the love you are talking about? You are asking questions. Stand on your feet. Let's go.